Welcome to adding content to eFolio, the bare basics. After watching this presentation, you should be able to get started on your eFolio without any problems. Let's get going. To help you use everything successfully, let's identify a few of the functions, where they're at, and what we call them. It will help get you started right. During this presentation, identifying text will be flying in. Pause the presentation to make sure you know where things are at at any time. The first thing I always like to do is make my site look nice. To do that, click on the Design button on the top menu bar. Then click on the Edit the Site Properties. This is a tricky button to find. It is under Accounts and looks like a wrench and pliers. Use this function to add a heading, a slogan, and a footer. You can also increase your chances of being found by adding keywords and description. After you've picked your design, it's time to build your site. To accomplish that, we need to start by clicking on the Build button on the top menu bar. To add some data to your electronic portfolio, click on the New Content in the far left panel. Many times there is a to-do list of things either a folio might suggest you do, or your instructor hopes you'll do. We won't go into any detail, but the to-do list, if used properly, will start you out right and keep you on track. Well, after you've added information to your eFolio by adding new content, it had to go somewhere. That somewhere is My Content. Any information you added will go here first. Nothing in the My Content pile of stuff is on the publicly viewable internet until you move it to the working space. Just because you create something does not mean it is on the public internet. You need to take another step to publish it. There are the three panels you'll be working with. On the right is the Manage Sites and Pages panel. In the middle is the workspace. We'll talk about that panel later. It has three sub-panels. And on the left is the Manage Content panel. This is another section I'll be talking about later. Let's make that site look nice. You can personalize it in three easy steps. First, click on the Design button in the top menu bar. Second, you'll see several designs you can choose from on the left side. Don't like what you see? Click on the drop-down box to see more. Finally, made a decision? Click on that particular design, then choose a color swatch just below the top menu bar if you want to personalize it even more. Done. Click on the Save in the upper corner of the workspace and you're done. Want to see what it looks like? Click on the Preview button in the upper right corner of the workspace next to the Save button. Again, adding new content is accomplished in three easy steps. First, click on the New Content button on the left side. Second, you'll see several different data types you can pick from to place your information. Choose one of these. Don't see the form you want? Click on the More to see additional forms. Third, once you see a data type you like, click on it. Then when the yellow bar comes up, click on the Create button. This is what a basic data type form looks like. Most data type forms are similar to this form. You might want to pause the slide to take a look and see what a basic form looks like. The first thing you'll need to do is to include a title. A word of warning, there is no spell check in the title section. The next section is the brief text. Note you can use traditional word processing tools to make this data look special. Bold, italic, change fonts, change colors, include links to data, and you can spell check this data too. Just enter a sentence or two in this section because it is to be used when you add this content to a web page's sidebar or other space limited location. Full text is the next section. This section has the same word processing tools as brief text. Bold, italic, change fonts, change colors, links to data, and spell check. This description will appear when you add this item to the body of a word web page. There are three other sections you can and probably will use. Related content, reflections, and feedback. We will not go into them now, nor will I go into the tags section next to save. When you're done with your work, hit the Save button in the bottom right corner. Now that you have saved data, you'll need to add it to your website. There are four preliminary steps to getting started. The next slide will show you the final steps. First, you'll need to click on one of the pages in your site. Second, click on the Edit button to start adding data. Note that the screen web page you're viewing does not have any data on it. When you add your data, you'll be able to see roughly what it looks like before you preview or publish it. Third, you need to go to the left side and click on the My Content Repository of data that you have saved. Finally, after you've decided which content to grab and move, click and hold your left button on the file to move it. This is the final slide. You can see how you can add data to your web page. Panel 3 is also known as the Side Panel. You would use this panel to publish the brief text from different data types. 
Panel 2 is the largest place to put data. You might run into some problems placing data on Panel 1 because some eFolio themes place their navigation links here. On the left side, under My Content, is where the data is being dragged from. Finally, you can see the data being dragged to the appropriate location on the site. When you decided on the location, let go of the left mouse button. Now that you've watched this video, you should be able to successfully create and edit your own eFolio. Good luck and have fun!